Yes. Okay, so we, we can start. So I can uh, remind you that the last time we just had some elementary introduction to Poisson geometry, and there was only one result, which was the Weinstein splitting theorem, which says the, the following thing that when you have a Poisson manifold, then locally around any arbitrary point, it is isomorphic to the product of something which is symplectic. times the Poisson manifold with Poisson structure vanishing at the origin, so we, around the point that we chose. <laughs> and uh, one implication of, of this splitting theorem is that through any point, the point that we choose, choose, choose here and of, of which the of this local isomorphism. There is a symplectic leaf passing through, so it means that our post manifold is really stratified into submanifolds which are symplectic. So that's somehow good visualization of what Poisson manifolds actually look like. And it also, in principle, gives us a, some intuition about what those symplectic leaves might look like. You see, this Poisson thing with Poisson structure vanishing at the origin is also then split into symplectic leaves, right? So it's something, you know, so there will be some leaves around here. This symplectic leaf is just a point, that's where our Poisson structure vanishes, but around it there are those symplectic leaves, which would be like even dimensional, so sorry for my <laughs> drawing, one is even in this case. And so the symplectic leaves around this point here, they are going to be this symplectic manifold times symplectic leaves there. So it means that the, uh, the dimension of those symplectic leaves can jump. If we move away, you see here, it's zero dimensional, here it becomes two dimensional, imagine that those things are spheres. So it can increase by jump, but it cannot de decrease by a small deformation, which is sort of logical. Okay, so this is some kind of local picture to have in mind. And to finish this, this little part of the of the course, uh, one can uh, now ask a question. So this, this goes in the direction of lo local classification of Poisson structures. Do we know that they are symplectic, which are locally given just by their dimension, and times something Poisson vanishing at the origin? So now the question is: Can we locally class can we classify locally those Poisson manifolds where this, the Poisson structure vanishes at the origin? And maybe fortunately for, for this course, the answer is no, because otherwise it would be a long answer. So what can one say now? So imagine that we have a, it can be just anyway, Rn, Rn since we're talking about local things, with some Poisson structure pi, such that pi at the origin is equal to zero. What can we what can we do in this case? Uh, one thing that one can ask: Let us linearize this pi around the origin. See, the, it's some tensor field which is equal to zero at at a point, so it makes sense to to take its linearization. It, it makes sense for arbitrary tensor field, so one can form the d at zero of pi. Okay, I'll call this guy m. Maybe it will be better. So that thing is actually is a linear map from what from t zero m into which to t zero m. Right, so this is like where bivector field would be. Our bivectors are here, and the linearization means that well, it's, we have a linear map going this way. Or if we wish uh, equivalent way, how to put it? If we take the uh, maximal ideal given by the, by the point, so all functions vanishing at zero, uh, then, and we take the, the Poisson bracket, okay, let me just start with these things. Anyway, the Poisson bracket will, uh, rim, will kills constant, so it doesn't matter whether I put all functions here or just the maximal ideal, but what is important, that it goes to the maximal ideal, because it vanishes at the origin. See that 
the function that we will produce will necessarily vanish at the origin because the Poisson structure vanishes at the origin. So it goes here. And in fact, we can also, from why the same token, we can, oops, sorry. We can say that it goes from the maximal ideal modulus of functions which vanish to second order times itself into the same thing. So who's that guy? That guy is T star at zero of M times T star at zero of M into T star at zero of M. So it's some bilinear map going this way. Right, this is equal to this is equal. This is equal. This is just a bilinear map. And it is Okay, one can say that it's a Poisson bracket, but it's true that the product here is just zero. We killed every, all the, all the products are zero. But what is important, it's a Lie bracket. <clears throat> and uh, who is this? We can, it's the same thing as here. This is the transpose of that map. So if I call this commutator, then this guy is equal to the transpose of the commutator, of the Lie bracket. So it's just the same thing. So uh, this Poisson structure gives us a Lie algebra structure on T star at the point where this Poisson structure vanishes. And the question is, the natural question is, Is it true that M is locally, that means around our point zero, is it locally isomorphic to T star zero of M, uh, oh, sorry, to Tm this way, which is equal, of course, to T star zero of M, the dual of that as a Poisson The question is simply, is it true that when we linearize our Poisson structure, is the or original Poisson structure isomorphic to the linearized one? So can we somehow choose coordinates so that only linear, ter linear terms of, the, of this bivector field survive? And the answer is, in general, no. So can you find an easy example? Yes, we can. If you, make, if you remember, any bivector field on, uh, on anything two-dimensional is automatically Poisson because there are no tri-vector fields there. So the Jacobi identity is just void there. So, so we can take like dimension of m equal to not zero over two, but that's better. And, and now something, for example, pi, vanishing at zero to second order. So the linearization is zero. So we can take any bivector field. We can pick one who has the zero differential at zero, but still is non-zero around. So this guy is certainly not linearizable. Uh, and uh, then one can possibly ask, so if this Lie algebra is very nice, is it true then? So what are the nicest Lie algebras? Nicest Lie algebra are probably those that are compact, where it means that when you take the corresponding simply connected Lie group, then it is compact. And there one can say that it's yes. If this T star is zero M. And uh, this theorem happens to be difficult, so I will not, not say anything more about it. It's like, okay. 
the original proof used something like the Nash Moser iteration process, which is probably the worst thing one can ever meet. And, <laughs> and now there are some better proofs, but only better compared to the original proof. So <laughs> let's, let's leave it this way. And it's, the answer is no, even in the case when this Lie algebra is semi-simple but not compact. So like it's a, let's just keep it, but it's a difficult thing. Okay, so this is the end of this very first part, this elementary introduction to Poisson uh, geometry. So now we should have something less elementary, but it's not the case. We're going to have some differential calculus on manifolds. Namely, you probably know it, but if you don't, then it's also okay. We're going to talk about Schouten. Bracket. So what, what is that? So imagine, so we have a manifold, then certainly when we take things like, well, what are called differential forms, that is sections of wedge of T star of M. And this is a nice thing, right? That it has a nice structure. I mean, there is this Dirham differential, and it's a, so it's a differential graded commutative algebra, and one can do many things with it. And, but in particular, our bivectors are not elements of, of this. <laughs> so we cannot use, use this at least directly. So we need to look at sections of the Grassmann algebra generated by, by T of M. This is a bit, bit too long, so I'll just call it T poly. M in polyvector fields on, on M. It is still a graded commutative algebra. It's just Grassmann algebra. Uh, but we're going to look for some additional structure which is sort of dual to the differential here. So here we have a differential there. We're going to have some bracket, which is called this Houghton bracket. So let's start with some, slowly with some definition. So if if we have a uh, graded commutative algebra, A is equal to direct sum of N and Z, A N is a graded commutative algebra, like this T poly, is the, for the moment it's going to be the only thing that we're going to meet there. Uh, then uh, a what? the Poisson bracket of degree minus one, also known as a Gersten Haber bracket. A, so what is it? So up to now, we only saw Poisson brackets on, on the algebra of smooth functions on a, on a manifold. Now we're going to have some Poisson bracket on, on some graded algebra, which will be just this uh, algebra of polyvector fields. Uh, but this one is going to have degree minus one, so it's not going to decrease the degree by one. Sorry, I'm going to spend this week uh, teaching analysis one, so now I'm probably <laughs> teaching in the same way here. If you uh, have any objections, then well, it's your problem, basically. <laughs> and we cannot change me, probably. Uh, so what is it? So it's a whatever, bilinear map. Bilinear, I mean the K bilinear by bilinear over the base field. From A times A. Okay, let's call it this way. 
to a, which is of degree minus one. So it means that if you take two homogeneous elements, then their, uh, the degree of their bracket is going to be degree of one plus the degree of the other one minus one. Okay. So it's written. maybe I'll, I'll just use this absolute value thingy for denoting the degree. So the degree of this thing is equal to degree of A, degree of B minus one. So there's this minus one inside. If you want to have some minus K, you can put here minus K. It's also perfect, okay. We're such that. So what was the Poisson bracket? First of all, it was a Lie bracket, right? So, so this thing. It's supposed to be a graded Lie bracket. The problem is that it decreases degree by one. So like the thing that I will write here, these. So what does it mean? It's, this thing means, means the same graded vector space, but, the, but with the degrees decreased by one. So in particular, when A is equal to T poly, then in this, in this guy, functions are going to be of degree minus one, vector fields of degree zero, by vector fields of degree one, etc. Okay, so this guy is a, is a graded the algebra. I remind you, graded Lie algebra means that there are some signs, inside also as in graded commutative algebra, so the same signs, sign rules apply here. And the second thing is there should be a Leibniz rule, which was saying that the bracket with somebody is a, is a derivation, the same thing here. So if you take something like this, then where A is some homogeneous element, then this is a, a derivation of, of A as an algebra. Oh, sorry, a graded, I should say. Let me write it. It's a graded derivation. There might be some signs, right? Derivation of, of the algebra of degree. At least this is one thing that we can guess. What is the degree? A minus one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, because like the degree of the result is degree of this plus degree of that, but minus one. So it's somehow shifts the degree by the degree of A minus one. So the only reasonable thing to write here of degree. And that's the end of this long definition. If you want to replace, to have their things of degree minus K, just search for all minus ones or plus ones or anything in this definition replaced by K. Yeah. So it's the greater derivation of A or A1? Of A, A1 is not, a, not an algebra. Okay. It's not an algebra, yes. <laughs> because the product is somehow should be something preserved in the degree, or, and if we shift it by one, then it's no longer going to preserve the degrees. And we're going to have this thing on T poly, as you might have guessed, I guess. Uh, Maybe some little observation. Oh, say, if you have this this guy, this guy, what is this thing? When somehow we apply, it's a map where we apply bracket, but from from the right. Is it still a derivation? You see, in uh, this Poisson bracket thingy, this was derivation. It was just minus. Minus this guy, uh, but but here, maybe I can I can let you to work out the, the rule. So first of all, like what this is minus one power somebody times a this guy, where this thing will involve the 
the degree of a and the degree of the dot. Is it so? It's, or should we even work it out together? Because I can work it out. So, <laughs> so let's do it together. <laughs> you see, what this bracket is a graded Lie bracket on a shifted by one. So the thing which well, for ordinary Lie bracket we just have minus, but then there should be minus one times the product of degrees of those two things. But we have to shift those degrees by one. We need to decrease, decrease one. So it's like this minus one times a. That's the sign. Together with this minus, that's the sign which is appearing there. Uh, I'm not going to use the sign, but, <laughs> but still, there is this sign. One can still ask, what is this guy? Is it the derivation? And the answer is yes. But it is not, it is a right derivation. of the same degree as before. So wh what do I mean by right derivation? I mean something like this that, uh, let's say, well, let's remark that D is a right derivation of A, just means that we're going to apply it from the right rather from, than from the left. That doesn't look very promising for the moment, but it, so I'll write it something like that. A and D, I'll put here an arrow, meaning that somehow we're applying from the right. Uh, but what, what, what should it satisfy? It should satisfy something like this, that when you apply to a product, then the thing should be A times, when you apply it only to B, and then we apply it also to A, but then we need to jump over B, so there's going to be a sign. That's minus one, the degree of D times the degree of B, A, D, plus B. So there's just a different sign convention, meaning that it's on, on this B where the, when you apply it on this B where there is no sign and okay, something like that. And now the, I don't know, should I call it theorem? It's probably too silly to call it theorem, but okay, let me do it. But there is a, says that there is a unique Gerstenhaber bracket on this T poly of M, uh, say to, to make this theorem uh, working in uh, all kinds of setups, even though we're always in C infinity, the thing, imagine that this is actually a sheaf of algebras. Of graded commutative algebras. Because we're going to and we'd prove it and construct it locally then no, let, let me just put it this way. So there is a unique Gerstner bracket on this guy, I'll forget this remark, uh, such that uh, what? First of all, xf is equal to xf for all vector field x and functions. M. And second thing is that 
this is going to be cute. Second thing that the bracket of x and y is equal to the bracket of x and y. Where this is supposed to be like the lead bracket of, of two vector fields. So let me try to prove it. <coughs> or it's really like construction. It's, that's actually what seems say, important to remember from this. Uh, maybe first, why, is, why should it be unique if it ever exists? See, those polyvector fields, certainly at least locally, certainly say on Rn, are generated as an algebra, are generated by functions and by vector fields. Therefore, if we know the bracket for functions and for vector fields, then we know it for, for everything. This basically solves this uniqueness thingy. Now we need to show that it exists, but it will follow from this uniqueness as is. <laughs> as it often happens. Namely, using that uniqueness, we, we are able to find a formula, which is going to be like unique. If, if, if it works at all, then it's going to be that formula. It might be given in local coordinates, but if you pass to some other coordinates, if it works, it should, has to be the same thing because it's unique. Therefore, it works. So uniqueness, OK. Poly by C infinity and vector fields. Now, it's okay, so if, if it exists. So let's take a local chart. So let's do, let's just work locally. Uh, it's probably not nice to work in coordinates, but I will do it because it's a very efficient anyway. So, so we have local coordinates on xi. And I put, can I use pi? Or okay, I'll use theta. Theta i's are going to be uh, coordinate vector fields. Oh, sorry, d over d x i. So our somehow coordinates are on. On some u part of m. T poly of u is simply going to be C infinity on u, which are just smooth functions in those coordinates, tensor with the Grassmann algebra generated by those thetas, theta 1 up to theta n. And OK, so let's now say, recall what we were doing for a Poisson bracket where we expressed it in, in local coordinates. We're going to do exactly the same here with this gerstner hubble bracket that we're constructing. So, so if it exists, oh, one thing that we can already notice is this, first of all, xi, xj. What is this guy? If you take this this bracket of two coordinate functions. What should be the degree of that, of that guy? That's of degree zero, that's of degree zero. Should be minus one. There are, we don't have too many things of degree minus one, therefore it's zero, right? Very good. 
that's a good start, that something is zero. Not everything is going to be zero, but never mind. Uh, let's try this theta i x j. What is this guy? Yeah, sorry, I told you that I'm still teaching analysis one, so but <laughs> the, uh, you're about as shy as those analysis one students, so it's, <laughs> it's okay. So it's delta ij, right? And finally, I, I know this is not, not really a, like a free algebra in those generators uh, uh, xi, but it, for many purposes, it behaves like the free algebra in generators uh, xi, so that's why it's going to be enough to, to know these brackets. And the final thingy, it's like theta i, theta j, that's equal to, I'm not going to wait for you, <laughs> is the commutator here, and those coordinate fields com commute, so it's going to be zero. Very good. And the final thing to, to notice, you know, This thing, how is it? It's a, it's a derivation in the second argument, and it's a well, all right derivation in the first argument. So it's a, a okay, all right, left, it's a right left by derivation. No, I mean, it, this drives that, and that drives this, and so. Uh, which implies using these rules necessary that A, B, if it ever exists, is something like this. Uh, la, la. It's, okay, L let me perhaps also, okay, I wrote these, these, and let me write also uh, this thing, X, okay, I think J, theta I. So what is this, can we? I think but what's going on. You see, we, uh, it's in a bracket, so um, this thing is of degree one, but in the bracket it behaves of degree zero. This is of degree minus one, but there is at, at least somebody of, of even degree. When you have somebody of even degree, then there are no signs. No strange signs, meaning that the sign of this should be minus that, it's a Lie bracket. So it's minus delta. It's only when you have two odd things when they meet and when you exchange them, there is a sign appearing. So what's happening here? So I'll write something like A, something on B, and now we're going to differentiate that guy or differentiate this guy, so it's something like this. D over D using this thing, theta I going this way, D over dxi that way, and minus the same thing, d over dxi theta i. This way. So it has to be this guy. We know it how it, it's a bi-derivation. We know what kind of coefficients and things put here because we know how it works on those generators. Therefore, it's this thing. Very good. So it must be this thing. If it exists, it must be this thing. Now, if you look at it, it's, I know there are those right derivations, there are, there are graded things, but otherwise it looks like a, when, we had, when we had a constant Poisson bracket, right? Meaning that there are no, there are, we just differentiate by those coordin coordinate vector fields, so to say, and there are no coefficients here, no non-constant coefficients there. And the constant by vector field was automatically a Poisson bracket for trivial reasons. If you apply the same reasoning, and I leave it up to you to apply the same reasoning, because it's too early in the morning for me, so then <coughs> you, can <coughs> you can see that this expression actually is a, is a Gersten-Haber bracket. The thing to, to, um, the thing to 
proof is the Jacobi identity. The rest is somehow obvious or whatever. This is Leibniz, the rest is just Leibniz rule. The Leibniz rule is just encoded in saying that it's a, well, it's a derivation here. So yeah, that thing works. The thing, uh, the thing to prove is, like, is uh, Jacobi identity, but it simply follows from the fact that this is a constant thingy. And it is. OK, cool. So we actually constructed it. We proved that it's unique. So it is a formula independent of coordinates. That's what we wanted to have. That's the end of the proof. OK. Maybe I can, okay, I can give you some sort of remark which either you or know already and then you're going to, uh, yeah, that's so good, or you don't know already and then what, what the hell is it talking about? But the, the, the remark has sort of no meaning, so that's why <laughs> it's going to generate this reaction probably. Uh, so how to, how to understand this thing? So if you took, say, T star of M, and now I can take like, all functions here and it, we're certainly, this is a symplectic manifold, so we have Poisson bracket there on functions there. But let me j just take, to compare better with what's going on here, functions which are polynomial on the fibers. So, I don't know. I don't know how to denote it. So it, uh, it's arbitrary smooth things on the, along the base, but on the fi restricted to fibers, it should, those should be just polynomials. So that's, that's a, the Poisson bracket on all functions survives also there. The Poisson bracket of two those polynomial things is still a polynomial thing. So that's a Poisson algebra. And what are the generators here? So the, if I were proving the same kind of thing, I would have something like xi's coordinate here and then pi's coordinates there. And then we would finally show that this guy is given by its same formula where there would be d over dp going this way and minus. <coughs> this way. So uh, here there is no difference between left and right derivation, but I can, it's still useful to write it because it's A, B, or yeah, okay, A, B, it's acting here and there. Okay, so it's like the same formula, basically. So how should one think about it? The idea is that those polyvector fields are still functions on some supermanifold. If you like the thingy, so the supermanifold is that we take T star of M, and, but now we understand those fibers here as odd things. So one way how to write it is one place is here pi to just indicate the parity uh, shift. Or better way how to write it if, if you want to see it as a graded manifold, if you want to see that the two functions there are actually graded, better way how to write it is like something like T star shifted by one of M, whatever. But even or odd, it is still symplectic. Just the this, this symplectic form happens to be odd, but whatever, it's given by the same construction. Therefore, the algebra of functions there should be Poisson. There should be a Poisson bracket on the algebra of functions there. And the algebra of functions there is nobody else but polyvector fields. You see, the algebra of functions here is like the, th those are more like symmetric tens tensor fields. It's more like sections of S of Tm that are functions here. So this is gamma of S of Tm. Uh, here we have uh, sections of, of wedge Tm. So this is just this difference of that. Here these things commute. It's, they form a commutative algebra. There they form a graded commutative algebra. They, they anti-commute. That's the reason behind this bracket. Okay. Possibly didn't explain anything, but if, if that's the case, here we have just the construction that's the only thing that 
you might have to remember. Even that you can now forget because the only thing to remember is that there is this, uh, this Gerson Hubble bracket and one can compute it just knowing these two, these two rules. And how is this Gerson Hubble bracket called? It's called Scotland bracket, that's why <laughs> we had this name. Okay. So this was the and why is it relevant for us? Uh, there are there might be many reasons, but the, the simplest, the most important is the following observation of let's call it proposition is that I is a Poisson structure if and only if. Pi pi is equal to zero. You see what happens? Like pi has degree two, but in the Lie bracket it has degree one. So it's an odd thing. So this is a non-trivial thing to, to say that the commutator of two odd things is equal to zero. Because if you exchange it, it, it there will be well, this minus sign will be cancelled by minus sign. So okay. So let's see if I can prove it. Oh, uh, yes, I can prove it, but there is something I forgot to tell you, <laughs> actually, uh, which is, okay, let me tell it, I'll tell you here. Some further properties. Of this code in bracket. Uh, one thing is uh, that for all A, for all polyvector fields in, uh, okay, what is it, poly? <coughs> and F in C infinity and X in vector fields, we have, well, first of all, what is F A? Now, this guy can be calculated as uh, there is a, this minus sign, minus i df into a. So we sum up. This is a polyvector field, so we can plug in a covector field inside, and we plug in into the first slot, and there is this unfortunate minus sign. But what, what can we do? And x a is equal to the Lie derivative of a by x. And why? Because This F and X are derivations. And, okay, uh, say so these things are true for a either, okay, for, for degree of a when it's either a function or it's a vector field because it's part, it was part of the definition, right? You see, th there is this minus sign because uh, there is a flip. Uh, we have, we, I wrote something like the vector field bracket with F. And so there, that's, that's why we have this minus sign. And, and finally, T poly is generated by by things in degrees, degrees zero and one, just, right? So it's enough to verify these things on generators and on generators, it's true. Uh, sorry to, for being a little bit over time, but let me just finish this proof here. So let's compute F with pi pi. So 
it's certainly it's i d f into pi pi. That's what we what we know. But using uh, what should one one use? One should now use Jacobi identity, right? If you see something like this. That's going to be something like f pi f pi pi, and the second term is well we have to go over pi, put there this f, and in the end what happens is that I move this bubble a little bit off, and we get twice that thing. You see why? Because when we're jumping over pi, there is a minus sign, and then we're exchanging things, there is a minus sign. I guess. Or not, yeah, something like that. Uh, okay, and now we have this. Do we recognize what we have here? You see this f pi, it's minus, uh, when we, okay, it's minus i df pi. We will plug in df into the first slot with minus sign. Did we meet this thing before? Do you remember how we called it? This, it's a vector field. We call it the Hamiltonian vector field generated by pi. So this guy is equal to minus xf thingy. So what you see here is uh, what minus 2 xf of pi. And now remember, a pi is a Poisson structure if and only, sorry, L, I should put it like the derivative by xf. A bivector field is a uh, is a Poisson structure if and only if it is preserved by the flow of all Hamiltonian vector fields. So this guy is zero for any f, if and only if this guy is zero or this guy is zero for any f. That's what we, well, this guy is zero for any f is just saying that, that the bracket of pi with pi is equal to zero. That's what we wanted to prove. And perhaps the final remark on, on, on this stuff, you remember uh, when, we, when I wrote the Jacobi identity, and I said that for arbitrary bivector field is not satisfied, but, but it is a tri-vector field, that whatever this combination, which seems to contain second derivatives, actually containing only first derivatives and skew symmetry, et cetera, it's a, it's a tri-vector field. And now we know who the tri-vector field is, that I can leave up to you, maybe I'll put it into the next exercise sheet. The trivector field is this pi pi, uh, just there is one half in front of that, somehow corresponds to these two, roughly speaking. So there is also now explanation from that guy. Okay, so let's make a break. Okay, so now for something completely different. So we're now uh, start talking about some uh, nice examples of Poisson manifolds. So one can say a lot about this general Poisson geometry, but this is not really a course on Poisson geometry. Uh, it's perhaps not even a course on quantization. Well, let's see <laughs> where we get. But the, uh, those examples that we're going to study or look at are called Poisson Lie groups. So these are things that are connected via this quantization that we are still have to talk about to Hopf algebras. So that's why they are sort of interesting. And so what is the definition? The definition one would say the Lie group G with a Poisson structure pi is a Poisson Lie group if the map if what the product map or it's a group so we, we have this map so if this guy is a is a Poisson map Which means, okay, 
means that w when we pull back two functions, then it, we can either take the, uh, the Poisson bracket here and pull back the, the Poisson bracket, or we can pull back those functions and take the Poisson bracket there. It gives, gives the same thing. Or other way how to put it is that if we take If you take the Poisson tensor here, so what is the Poisson, uh, what is the Poisson pi vector here? Uh, it's pi here and pi there. Right? It's like, and we take, and the statement is that if you take pi on this guy, and the first g, and pi on the second g, the same pi but on the second g, and we push it forward to g, then we, we get the pi, which is on G. OK, so do we know some examples? Here it is. A trivial group, yes. <laughs> Very good example. There is another example that was disclosed when I was not present here. <laughs> But in some sense, it was also disclosed by me. So one stupid example, but also maybe not that stupid. Not as stupid as trivial. <laughs> <laughs> one example is that when you take a Lie algebra and you take the dual of the Lie algebra, then this is a naturally Poisson manifold. And there is this wonderful map, which is plus. It's a vector space, in particular a group. And as you shown on some exercise, this map, see, basically it's just saying that this Poisson structure is linear here, and this map here is a Poisson map. So it's a commutative group, but with non-trivial Poisson structure. So what we are going to, okay. Uh, yeah. Here, somehow, the group is not quite trivial, but close to trivial. <laughs> and it's the Poisson structure that is non-trivial. Some sort of, of more stupid example is when you take arbitrarily group with zero Poisson structure. I guess that's going to be Poisson. It looks silly, but that example is, in some sense, dual to that example in, in sense that it's going to be disclosed a little bit later. Or say, G with pi equal to zero. This is really silly, but it is an example. Now, what does this thing mean? Let's let's have a look at. Meaning of or the meaning of whatever is written here. There are several ways how to put it. I, I will maybe put it this way. Say if we have two elements, G H in G. So let's just, let's just have a look at what's happening when you, okay, you here is this group G, here is group G, here is group G, we have here this element GH, which is the image of element G, and element H under this map. Let's look at the tangent map to, to this M thingy, right? So, What's happening in this guy? So I would like, like from T G of G times a plus. Sorry. Yeah. Plus T H of G. We're going to T G H. So this is what this M star is doing, right? We're now looking at bivector field, so we just, this is basically, okay, this is just DM at, at this point. Now we look at 
what's happening with wedge two of this guy. Like wedge two of the M. And now our uh, Poisson structure here, it only lives, somehow. there is one component which lives in wedge two of TG and another component which another part which lives in the wedge two of th, both of them are just called pi. So there is like pi, but at the point g, living in the first component, there is a, again this pi at h, in the second component, and there is no mixed term, right? This wedge two of, of this guy contains also this tensor that, but the Poisson structure doesn't contain this mixed term. So and this guy is supposed to go under this map to pi, of GH, which I will write in this way that what it, what it actually means is that pi at GH is equal to what do we have to do? We take pi at G, and which is a bivector at G, but what's happening with this map is that we transfer, we transfer this bivector from, from G to H by the, by the right translation. I'll write it just like this, which made, okay, it's a very nice shortcut notation which will make you furious, I guess, but it really means that you take this and translate it to the point GH by the right translation. So this is what, what this map is doing, what this M star is do, doing to just this, uh, to this pi G. It's mapped to this guy, but there is another component. There is this, it's this thing plus that thing. So this other thing is mapped to, no, to left translation of Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we, so we have to take the map from G to G, which is given by uh, right multiplication by H, and that carries anything that we might have anywhere to, to anywhere. So that's what's happening here. Uh, what can we, okay, that's, a re, that's this equation that it has to satisfy. Uh, one little observation. We can possibly start by putting some random elements into, into these things. The, the least random element is uh, the, uh, the unit element of the group. So what happens there? You see, we get the pi at the unit is equal to pi at the unit, not translated anywhere, plus pi at the unit. Okay, pi, let's call it E, is equal to pi. E plus pi E, which implies in particular that pi at the origin vanishes. There are one consequence is that this Poisson group is never going to be symplectic. It's at the origin that pi vanishes. And so in particular what we can do, what we can find out of here. So when we take uh, the linearization, this implies that we have a well defined of pi at E, I call it the differential of E at pi if you wish which as we saw is a, should be a Lie bracket. And it's a Lie bracket on uh, what? On the cotangent space. It is a Lie on G star. So in particular, whenever we have a Poisson Lie group, there is a Certainly there is a Lie bracket on G, but there is also a Lie bracket on G star. 
And as we shall see, there's, they satisfy one more nice requirement, which so this thing is going to be called a Lie-by algebra, when there is a Lie bracket both on G and on its, on its dual, and it, there is some little compatibility condition. And we shall see that Poisson Lie group, at least when, when the group is simply connected, is simply equivalent to a Lie by algebra structure. So that's roughly what, what is going to happen. Probably we'll not finish it today. Uh, th there is one, uh, one thing that one might expect and turns out to be the opposite of what one, one might expect. See, uh, this, here I was saying that this Poisson structure is somehow compatible with the, with the product, but uh, a group is not just a product, it, it also comes with the inverse. And uh, so one can ask, well, why didn't I put there a requirement that it's also a Poisson map for the inverse? But then it's also true that this inverse is somehow defined by, this, by the product itself. And uh, what turns out that the uh, inverse is not a Poisson map, the inverse is an uh, anti-Poisson map, it changes the sign. So if I remark that this map G maps to is anti-Poisson, I, I will not, it's a very simple thing to check, but I'll probably put it into as one of the simple exercises. And there is yet another thing which, okay, I guess it's now clear from what happened here, but one still might expect that, an, say, a nature of Poisson structure on a group should be something which is like invariant. That's not what's happening here. Those Poisson Lee uh, structures are not in, neither left nor right invariant unless they are zero, right? <laughs> because you see, there is a point where, the, where this Poisson uh, by vector is equal to zero. So if it happens to be, say, a left invariant, then well, just zero everywhere. Okay, so pi is not So somehow it turns out that these Poisson Lee structures are way more interesting than the, those left or right invariant Poisson structures. One can easily uh, understand these left or right invariant things, but those Poisson Lee things are somehow connected with many, many more interesting ideas. Okay, we're not yet done with the meaning of this star thingy. Or one can, it's a very simple equation, so when it comes to a very simple equation, then one can reformulate it in many evidently equivalent ways, as one is doing in analysis one in particular. And so, yet more for this meaning of, of this thingy. You see, uh, when, uh, when G is a group, then, uh, then things like, okay, G is a group, it certainly implies that, for example, when you take T of G, that it's also a group. Well, it's a Lie group, okay. And what is the group structure there? It's just the tangent map for, okay, wait, there is this M, G times G to G. This guy is just DM or DM or however should I call it. TG times TG. Uh, 
And it's not, not only true here, it's also, okay, our bivector field is not a section here, it's a section of wedge two of that guy, but say wedge two of TG is also a bit true. Where the pr product is given still by the tangent map, so some other, or induce or wedge two of the tangent map or something. Just do, do the same thing. It's very simple. And what can one say about this regroup? Uh, that thing is, an, okay, we certainly have a, it lies over which to G. It lies over G. That's a, so a Lee group map. <laughs> and it's an extension of that guy by whatever lives over the unit there. And what is it that leaves over the unit? It's wedge two of T at the unit. Maybe it's wedge two of G. Okay. And it's a whatever. Now, I'm not, I should put here one, but this all of a sudden is an abelian group with, where the unit is zero. So this is going to be very interesting <laughs> exact sequence where <laughs> There is zero and there is one, but well, whatever. Don't worry, I feel wish I can put there one. So it's just, it's an extension of, of uh, this guy, but that guy, and it's sort of silly extension because we also have a splitting. Here there is a zero section. Oh, so this is just a billion. It's into vector space, this thing. So there is this, we have this splitting thing. So it simply means that this guy as a group is just semi-direct product of this with that. So wedge two of T G is just G semi-direct. I never, never know this way, I guess. Which way I should put it, this way which to of G and semi-direct product to, to know semi-direct product, there should be some action of this on automorphisms of that. And uh, well, it's, we just think of it, you conjugate, start conjugating thing is here. So it simply acts naturally. The only natural action here is the one which, uh, which comes from the adjoint action as it, well, because that's the, I, uh, okay, that, that's what it is. <laughs> with respect uh, respect to the adjoint of G. So that's what it is. That's what our, our, what our group looks like. And finally, again, for the meaning of the star. So what is the meaning of the star in, in these terms? Can you come up with some silly idea? Anyway, what, what is pi? Pi is a section of which to G. So it's like a map from G to which to G. And that if that thing is satisfied, it means that this map is not just an arbitrary map, but it is a morphism of Lie groups, right? It's a group morphism. This pi, who is map going this way? In the sense, well, it's again yet another splitting of this this thing. It's, it's supposed to be a section. Yes, this some of this property of being multiplicative. It's exactly that thing, and if you okay. Try to think about why it's true. Even you don't even have to stare at this, 
at whatever is whatever is written here. You can even come to the back to the very definition of of what is a Poisson Lie group. It's just like push forward of this plus that is equal to that. That's exactly somehow that it's compatible with the with the group structure because that group structure is given exactly by those push forwards that this tangent map which is which produce which makes this to a Lie group. So it's a Lie group morphism, which is a splitting of this, of the thing. And now a Lie group morphism, at least for, a, say, when our groups are simply connected, certainly a Lie group morphism is uniquely given by a Lie algebra morphism. So if, say, G is one connected, then this is equivalent to a Lie algebra morphism. So what would be the Lie algebra morphism? We're supposed to go from G to the Lie algebra of that, which is just G now semi-direct sum. I, th there is some school of thought that semi-direct sum should be written this way. I'm not quite sure whether this school of thought is correct. Also, I'm now I'm totally unsure where to put this <laughs> guy, but well, it's supposed to be this thing, or if you wish, I can write this same semi-direct product there. Over there, times, uh, plus is the wedge two of G. So wh where, okay, this guy, oh, so this is a billion, there is no bracket on this, and the bracket between though this and that is just, just given by the adjoint action of this on that, and there is the, the original bracket on, on G. And this Lie algebra morphism, well, it shouldn't be totally arbitrary, right? this pi should be a section, which means that when we apply when you go back to G, when you just take this projection to, to G, then this should be the identity. Well, it's an obvious thing here, but it's, it should be also true here, meaning that when, uh, mm -hmm. when we project from here just to G, I mean we killed we killed this guy, and we should we should get identity. So like, this guy should be called, somebody from here should be mapped to itself plus something. So Lie algebra morphisms of this form. And what are those? How are they called? Okay, so we should have go from G to G, okay, plus, there is this semi-direct plus, but it's plus. Which to G, where any, whatever, X is mapped to the same X, and plus something from here that I can call, say, delta of X, where this delta is uh, from G, to a G, and who is this delta? We already met it. You see, it's done the linearization of this pi when seen as the section thingy. Well, that's what we met. We, we already met like linearization of pi. That's what, what this guy is. It's equal to D at E of pi. So that's, that's what we saw there. And Okay, so it's, a, it's supposed to be a Lie algebra morphism of this, of this type. So when is this? When is a map? When is, okay, when is this guy a Lie Let's just, just compute, let's suppose that we have a random linear map delta, and let's just, now plug it into the three brackets, what's happening here. 
So what, what should we what should we check? We should check take like x y in, in g and have a look at what's happening. Uh, how should I call this? Let me call it. I know. What is your favorite letter? <laughs> what is your favorite? <laughs> L. L. Great. Thanks. <laughs> so. Let's have a look at L of x, y. That thing, I'll oh, just plug it in. Okay, so it's, like, maybe I'll write it like, okay, it's a pair, so it's in this thing. So I'll write it this way. So x, comma, sorry, x, y, sorry. x, y, comma, delta x, y. Uh, but this should be equal to the bracket of Lx Ly. So that's the bracket of x comma delta x with y comma delta y. And as I said, what is the bracket here? The bracket of F on the Lie algebra is just this thing, x, y. Now, two things from this which to g, they commute. There is no bracket. There is only this mixed bracket. So when you have x acting here or y acting there, so we would have something like x acting there is add x on delta y and minus, since it's in the opposite order, minus at y delta x. Cool. So therefore, the outcome is that is the delta of x and y should be equal to at x delta y minus add y delta x, which is also known as being a one cocycle. As this delta g to h to g is a, if you wish, Okay. So you see, wh where did wh where did we get that? Our linearization of this, of this Poisson structure at the origin, that is our delta, if it's supposed to somehow produce this pi everywhere, it should satisfy exactly this condition. So when it satisfies this condition, then it defines a unique bivector field, which is multiplicative in that sense that, that this is a Lie group morphism. So let me maybe write it down. For a so the conclusion. Say. So yeah, I, so a bivector field now. This kind of thing is equivalent, at least for one connected G to delta going from 
g towards 2. g such that okay. Okay, so this is this compatibility condition I was talking about. You see, this delta. Now, so what's happening? You see, this delta of going from G towards to G. I'll say is the, the transpose Um, okay, let me clear maybe. So if it, say, say suppose that G is, uh, is Poissonly, meaning that we have this pi satisfying that thing, but it's also a Poisson structure, right? So this thing somehow works for arbitrary bivector field. Here there is no talk about any Jacobi identity ever. It's only about like this multiplicativity condition. Only about the, only about this part. So such a thing is equivalent to, to that thing. Now it, when you have a Poisson Lee structure, so something which satisfies that and is also a Poisson and is also a Poisson structure, then certainly we know that when we linearize it at the origin, we get a Lee bracket on the dual. The Lee bracket on the dual is just the same thing as this. It's just the transpose of that. It's the transpose of of the Lee. on G star, or if you wish, one can say or delta is a Lee co bracket. So a Lee co bracket is what is, whose transpose is a, is a Lee bracket provided this vector space is finite dimensional or something, so when one can easily flip those, well, well, I can dualize and dualize back and things like that, uh, which is certainly our case, all our, our league groups are finite dimensional, quite definitely, always. But in principle, a league co-bracket might be defined even when the dual is not, well, okay, when something, what, whatever that something is. So, so this delta is a league co-bracket, and there is, a con there is a compatibility condition between, there is some, some link between delta and the Lie bracket on G. And, and they satisfy this plus thing. So now I could write this definition. A Lie by algebra. Is say this thing like G with a bracket and the co-bracket such that well is a Lee bracket delta a Lee co-bracket and they satisfy that plus thing. In other words, when the delta is a one co-cycle, whatever. I didn't say like uh, there is a complex in, in which this is this means that it's a one co-cycle. I didn't tell you what what the complex is. <coughs> but it doesn't matter for us. It's just thing which satisfy that it's called a, called a Lie by algebra. Now we shall see, probably not today. That there is a very nice way how to understand those uh, Lie by algebras, because this way it's not clear how to produce examples, right? That's just, just uh, this looks like a very random condition. So it's it's difficult to understand how to come up with examples, but we'll have some way how to rephrase this thing in such a way that all of a sudden there will be plenty of examples and they'll be very easy to to find. But now the final thing to to check. To, like, to finish off this part. You see, so what did we prove? We showed that any Poisson Lee group is producing a, 
Lie algebra that we know. Now, if we start with the Lie algebra, so then this delta satisfies this plus. It means that we can we can find uniquely that pi. It's a delta gives us this Lie algebra morphism. Therefore, it integrates to Lie group morphism. It gives us a unique bivector field on on G. But what one needs to check is that whether this bivector field is actually Poisson. It's, a, it's clearly Poisson at the, ori uh, at the origin, it somehow works, because it's a, this delta is a Lie co-bracket. Well, there, there is, its linearization really gives us a Lie bracket on, on, on the dual of G. But the, uh, the question is whether when we start integrating it, whether we really get a Poisson structure everywhere. And it's, it's the case. So we have somehow. So there is a we have a one one. Then between three by algebras and uh, one connected. Poisson Lie groups. That means the the only thing that needs to be proven. Actually, uh, everything else was uh, was already done. If G bracket delta is a algebra, then the multiplicative Pi G to watch to G given by by delta is a is Poisson. So how, how, what is the main idea of the proof? The main idea is the, the following thing. First of all, let us say, uh, say if uh, for A in, uh, in T poly of G, we'll say that, I'll say, we'll call it is multiplicative. So it's just, let's define this, the same now for arbitrary polyvector fields, not just for bivector fields. Uh, if A seen as a section, so it's going from G to wedge T of G is a group. I'll just call, let's just do this thingy. Now the important thing is uh, if you have, if A and B are multiplicative, then their Schouten bracket is also multiplicative. So this is something to be checked uh, since we have only like one minute. I'll, I'll postpone it until until next time, but it's a 
You can also do it by yourself. It's, it's sort of easy thing, but let's let's postpone it. And hence, this thing as being multiplicative is uniquely defined by, well, it's a Lie group morphism, so it's uniquely defined by this Lie algebra morphism given by A, so it's uniquely given by its linearization at, at the origin. by D, E of A, B. Since the group is given, or is specified, if I was to use the same word, by the algebra. Very well. Now, let's have a look what, what's happening when we take our pi, the one which appeared here. So, go it like, but, what's happening when you look at pi pi, and look at just what's happening at the origin. So we like just take this thing. What's happening? This thing is zero because it's a, but this linear part of pi is a Poisson structure. It's given by, uh, it's given by a Lie algebra. So this guy is zero since delta is a, what the, Lie co-bracket. So, you see, that thing, this uh, by vector field pi pi is uniquely given by its, dif by its different, it vanishes at the origin, it's multiplicative, and it's uniquely given by its differential there, by its linearization, that linearization vanishes, therefore pi pi is equal to zero. Okay, that's the end of this thing. Up to that minor thing to show that multiplicative uh, polyvector fields are, are closed under the scoping bracket.